Okay, sorry about that. It disconnected. So now let's continue uh, the input and type. So I hope the previous part was clear. Um, and now let's command and hide that one. And then let's get that one. All right, so let's talk about 2.3, which is input and type. And um, the, the input operation, as, as I've already explained in the, in the previous one, is the opposite, which is the greater than and less than sign, and the character output and the character input um, will actually dictate whether the, C, the compiler should take from the user or should um, display from the user. So now let's just have some quick fun with this code then. Um, let me explain it quickly. So again, we just have the include IO stream using namespace, and then we got the int main, and then we got the C out. Um, yeah, let me point out that in some programs you might need to have return return zero at the end because you got int, and if you got an integer, then you have to return a zero. Um, this will be more clear when you actually reach to chapter seven when we speak about functions. So uh, I'm just touching on basics here again. So now let's see what this um, piece of code does. So it's gonna character out. So it's gonna put on the screen. Please enter your first name and age. So you can think, all right, I'm expecting two inputs. So the first input will be a name. So it must be a string. And I'll name it first name. It could be X, it could be Y, it could be anything. But um, again, in 2.7, we'll know why. And then an age, which is going to be an int age. So basically, the first input the user takes, because the way that C++ works is it executes, executes line by line. So character input first name. So if the user puts an age, you'll get an error, as we have seen in the previous one. And if the user puts a character in the second instead of a number, then also the program will crash. How do we solve such errors? We will also know that um, ahead in the next few chapters. So basically, after the user puts in the first name and the age, character output hello, first name, which is right here, and then age, so it will display age and next with the age. So let's see how does this works. So we get go ahead and run the program. That will succeed. Good news. And please enter your first name. So let me try here. Major. And then I'm gonna enter. So in your mind, major has been saved in first name. And then let's put an age 35 enter and then the age has been saved and as you can see here hello age hello major age 35 and if you want to just play around with the code let's say take this out here and then take this out here and let's run this code again you can get major and 35 and you got hello major age 35 without the um, brackets so simple code takes in from the user. Uh, if you want to try the way around, okay, let's see what happens if instead of the first name we put a number. And then instead of the age we put characters. As you can see what happens is hello 35 age 0. Hmm. Now let's think what happened here. String actually takes characters String could be thought of as takes takes in numbers, takes in characters, takes in letters, and so on and forth. But in some programs, it wouldn't. So in some compilers, I'm sorry, some compilers are more strict than others. But Xcode 2016, things have changed. But hey, let's look at the int. Although I've had MNDB, the age was displayed as zero. Some of you guys with different compilers will get an error. But because int can't take any characters, int is strict. Int is strictly uh, for numbers. So let's try that one. If I'm gonna put 235s here just to confirm It works perfectly, but if I'm gonna put two characters You get zero so you see that and this is called conversion you there there are a set of conversion rules You can convert an integer to a string, but you cannot convert a string to an integer but this is called unsafe conversions. There are safe conversions and there are unsafe conversions. And I'll cover that um, in the future on, okay, what can I take and what I cannot take. And these are called conversion. You're converting um, types. So 
that's for input and types let's look at operations and operators um, if you're thinking operations and operators as in mathematics uh, not yet <laughs> we're gonna cover that we're actually gonna build a calculator and we're gonna build a pretty advanced calculator not the basic calculators on the internet but a good advanced calculator so let's look at 2.4 here quickly so we have a, a piece of code and uh, actually let's look at it at the X code so you can see the colors and uh, it's more clear so let's go ahead and comment this and let's scroll down and uncomment this bar right here. Um, all of these codes are available in the summary um, in the link below. So, yeah. So let's see. Here, here we have an if statement. Now, if you're not sure of what's an if statement, uh, don't worry about it. Um, I'm trying to cover the operators here, which is the double equal, and which will actually it's either called assignment or initialization. That will be covered in the next slide. But let's. Um, quickly look at this. So if I'm gonna click run, um, the first thing should appear is character output please enter two names. The first name will be saved in a string first and the second name is gonna be saved in a string second. Now let's see what happens here. So uh, it will be saved in an order of the first and second and then let's think about it. If the first is the same as the second then out on the screen that's the same name twice however the first name is less than second then print out first alphabetically before second if the first is more than the second or alphabetically more than the second then see out first is alphabetically after the second now remember that the quotation mark is as good as the user describes them. So if I put a number, then it will still appear alphabetically. Although numbers are ordered and not in alphabetics. So, please enter two names. I got major and then I got tone. So major is alphabetically before tone. Is that right? Yes. M comes before tone. But hey, let's switch that around to make sure that it's working. So if we got tone and then we got major... Then we got Tom is alphabetically after major. You can see that. So it was before and after. So this code perfectly works. But let's try an unsafe conversion. So if I say 5 and then I say 1, 5 is alphabetically after 1. But let's play around with the quotation marks just to give you a quick practice. So we can simply add numerical. And then our code now can work. Or that's where it works, but makes more sense for. So if you say new method, and then we hit play, run, sorry. And then we can simply see 5, 2. So as you can see, the code is as good as the user writes it. So this is the operator here, which is a double equal. One equal is something else. Double equal is for comparing. So um, this is using the double equal. Um, if we actually put it in this code, instead of writing an Xcode, we can quickly revise it. Please enter your first and second name. The first name will be saved in a string first. The second name is going to be saved in a string called second. And then they are both going to be put in the character input. And then it's going to simply put the first name and the second name with this thing over here. So it's just going to add them. And this is called a concatenating strings. Very simple. Uh, another way to use the operators on numbers instead of uh, instead of uh, sorry to use the num on strings instead of operators, and and this is very very uh, a simple one. Now let's talk about something more important, which is the assignment and initialization. Now there are two parts for this. First of all, I'm gonna explain this part over here is how to think when you see a code. So if you say a equal a plus seven, you're gonna think hmm. So I got A and I got A. How, how or how should I think about this? So let's imagine I got A equal 4 somewhere over here. So first get the value of A, which is a 4. Let's say I got int A equal 4. 4 will be read here, but will be unknown to this part. So I will have 4 plus 7, which equals 11. So the new value of A equals 7. 11, sorry. The new value of A will equal 11. Now this is called in assignment not initialization and there's and there's huge difference between both like and that's logically 
this is another example here int y equal 8 is an initialization but x equal 9 is an assignment okay how's that possible if it was int x then int x will also be an initialization and not an assignment now if I'm gonna put this in a clear definition you can tell the two apart by the type specification that always starts an initialization an assignment does not have that and as you can see in the assignment it doesn't have but in an initialization it does have so in principle an initialization always finds the variable empty as in our case here on the other hand an assignment must be an, an assignment must clear out the old value from the variable before putting it into um, the new value so I hope this is a little bit clear here let me look what I do have oh that's for the next part okay so that's assignment and initialization now let's put that into full screen mode and let's look at composite assignment operators um, actually for initialization and an assignment we can uh, quickly take this example here so let's go ahead and cut this out and let's put this back to white so um, we can see here string previous oh yeah let's run this code so it's clear for you guys and we got nothing because we have no C out unfortunately but it takes it takes an input so string previous equal nothing this is basically just an empty thing and then we have a second string called current however the first input we put in is call is going to be saved into current if current equal previous and then our previous will be empty then the previous will equal current so we will have nothing here does that make sense let, let me go over it slow slowly again but first of all let me make this clear let's see out let me ask the user to enter something. Please enter words. Whatever. And line. Now, let's start the previous one. Start a new one. Please enter words. Okay. So it's right here. And then I will say Tom. Enter. I'll have nothing. So if I said John, I'll still have nothing. If I said Tom again, I'd have nothing. But if I said Tom Tom, I will get repeated words. Does does that make sense? I hope so. Um, so see out, please enter words, and then the first one is saved in current. And at the first time, which when we said Tom, it did not equal to something. So that's why it just went into the loop and took the second input. And then it compared it here. It had Tom already saved in previous. So when I had Tom again, it was Tom equal Tom. So we had repeated words came out. Otherwise, just save the current into previous. That's why when we had Tom again after John, the first Tom was already gone. Because we did not save the first Tom. It just saved the first initialization. I hope this is not... Uh a bit complicated now but it will uh, clear out again just feel free to ask me questions so yep that was assignment and initialization now let's look at composite assignment operators um there's not really much to say about but it's just a, a different way of uh, writing names so um remember in the previous two slides we said a equal a plus seven where if a equals four then four plus seven will give us eleven this is another way of writing it basically so this is just like if you want to be if you want to look more professional, but it means the same thing. I I'd, I'd of course go ahead go for this. Um, this is like too basic, so go for this. But if you feel more comfortable with this, then by all means do this. It wouldn't really affect much. So this is composite assignment operators. Now names. I spoke about names earlier, um, and there are a set of reserved names. If you're gonna write a name, it must always start with a letter and contain only letters, digits, and underscores. So if you're going to start with a, with a number, then that is not going to really work because you're violating the C++ letter, the C++ rules. If you're going to use like the dollar sign, that's not a letter, it's not a digit, that's not an underscore, so you'll get an error. Space is not a letter, right digit, or underscore. So, hmm, okay, nice talking, let's try it out. So, um, this might be too complicated to implement. Now, let's go for... A simpler example. Oh, let's go with Anna and Marie. So let's remove that. And let's say 
I'm gonna start because I don't have to. Okay. Run. Let's stop the previous one. And there you go. You got an error. Unexpected qualities. Now let's start with an underscore. Again, hmm, not the best thing. Hey, we got an error here. Now let's try this. Ooh, Xcode ex uh, accepts underscore. So, again, 2016, compilers are getting updated, books are getting out of date. So, you can actually, no, sorry, you can actually start with an underscore. I apologize, you can't start with the dollar sign, can you? Now let's try this. X causes the star, ladies and gentlemen. So it does um, take dollars. Okay, now let's look at reserved words. And reserved words be something like if. You can't, you can't ever. So and you already got a code before starting. So let's try if and let's run it. Build failed because this is a reserved word. So it might, it might not. It might start with a letter, and it might be perfect. But if it's a reserved word, then it wouldn't work. Let's look back at the textbook actually. Oh. Uh, well, see, even the textbooks are out of date. Although, this is, let's say if it starts with a cap space, that would definitely not work. Let's say start man and start man. It doesn't work. So as you can see, but if we actually cancel the space between them, let's hit it. It should work. Perfect. Um, underscore works, but let's try dollar sign here. Let's see if it works. Yes, it works. So this is um, the names. Ignore earlier about what I said about not starting with dollar sign. What if we had the dollar sign in the middle? You know, as much as I did C++, <laughs> I still love to mess around and see what works and what doesn't work. So we have to make sure that both actually are the same. So let's it. So it works. So guys, ignore the part in the book where it says dollar is not a zero underscore it actually works but don't do it you know if you have an older compiler a different compiler don't do it just stick to the c++ rules oh and the final slide here uh, contains basically the definitions i went over which is a type object value variable declaration and definition i don't want to bore you and read that you can read this one but this helps you imagine something so if you say like int a equals seven you can imagine that this is A and 7 is saved in a box. And B9 is saved. This is just a way of imagining. Um, as you can see here, the single quotation marks, no quotation marks, double quotation marks. So um, can, we, can we put a double on a 7? Yes, we can. But can we put an int on a 1.2? No. That's not possible. This is an unsafe conversion. So let me show you what I mean. So if we go ahead and say int first equal five, and then we go ahead and say double second equal five point five, and then C out first and L C out second and L and let's go ahead and run this. It will work perfectly. But if we change the double into an int, will that work? Hmm. Mm. Yes, it will work as if you won't get an error, but the result is changed. When you use an int, it downgrades it. You can't get a, a, a you can't get the decimal place. But if you use the double on a single digit, that's no problem. But you can't use it into a single, and that's not the value you're gonna get. You can simply actually go ahead and put as much dots as possible, and it should be fine. Yep. So this is for chapter two, and see you guys in chapter three. Thank you for watching.